Apple's spectacular failure to replace Qualcomm. Now, this is not your and my headline. Exactly. This is the Wall Street Journal's headline. And Apple and Tim Cook must have been absolutely, uh, what would I say, pleased, ex excited, staggering happiness after it saw this title. Now, well, how funny is this, though? This is written by Aaron Tilly, and we saw Aaron the week before. So he's literally like conjuring this, and we're talking to him, and he's not giving up. You know, he, he didn't bring this up to his, uh, his credit, but good job, Aaron. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and, and, and this was a piece that, you know, a few weeks ago, Pat, the announcement that Qualcomm got the big contract from Apple came out. And this kind of happened in a really busy week. This was the ARM week. This was Apple's new launch week. This was, so it kind of got a little bit muted in the middle of that, but this was a multi, multi-billion dollar deal for a Qualcomm. It gave some additional legs. Qualcomm had been trying to convince the investor class that losing Apple was going to be something it was prepared to do. And it was, but how much better for a Qualcomm if it can keep providing to Apple for another two to three years. It's three years in the contract. Um, and, you know, in your and my opinion, when they first came out with this news at the end of their long settlement after Apple tried to sue Qualcomm into selling itself to Broadcom, that's not exactly how it happened. But, you know, if you piece it all together, they were trying to weaken Qualcomm substantially and then basically potentially maybe see it sold to a company they had a better <laughs> relationship with. Again, Speculation, I'm putting that out there, lawyers, I'm just saying. Um, but long and short was you and I both said, Pat, it ain't happening. They're not gonna get this done. You know, Qualcomm, um, sorry, Apple bought, what was it, Infineon? Uh, Intel. Well, Intel, oh, Intel bought Infineon, Infineon business, which was the business at Intel that was supposed to be able to build the 5G modem. That was the split um, in, in Apple's last 4G phones. They were able to buy that in split. But throughout that entire time, the Qualcomm part always outperformed the Intel part. And as that transition to 5G got closer, Intel's group could not make it. So Intel ended up having to shed that business on a fire sale to Apple with the hope that Apple could bring these resources in and ultimately figure out how to uh, build this 5G RF system that has proven to be nearly impossible. Now, this article, Pat, basically exposed, and it was reshared all over the internet, that effectively... It's been a quote unquote spectacular failure. And this goes back to 2018 was when this really started. So we're not talking five years. And the idea was, is Apple believed it could make more money if it could build its own chip like it's done in so many other parts as it's tried to vertically integrate. This is the Tim Cook special. And basically what's ended up happening is with a few parts from namely Qualcomm and Broadcom, it's either been determined they can't do it more efficiently or they can't do it at all. And so in this case, this is the, we can't do it at all. Um, you know, they were trying, Pat, right up to the deadline of last year. This phone was supposed to be the first one that had this new Apple part. And not only they couldn't make it small enough and they couldn't make it perform. So these things were overheating. They were too large. They were non-performant. And effectively, Apple had to go crawling back to Qualcomm, begging for its part, <laughs> which was super interesting, Pat, because this could this had to be an absolute nightmare for Qualcomm or for in Jesus an absolute nightmare for Apple Pat are we the are we the are we the pilot or the passenger <laughs> what's going on here um oh, no, dude. and in the end you know now what's happening is Apple's got chips that are probably three to maybe even five years behind when it comes to an RF modem system and we're looking at 2026 or later before uh, Apple's going to be able to make its own part having said that Pat I will say while I was 100.1% sure that they were going to have to come back for this round, I do feel the next round, I will be surprised if they have to come back again. This is my early prediction, but over the next three years, I'll be surprised if they aren't able to make this happen. So I know we're coming on time, but I am going to get my fill here. Yeah, I've got them. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not rushing. Not, so go, so go. I told you so, not you, Daniel, but everybody out there. In 2019, I said this was going to be a stretch. Intel was 18 to 24 months behind when they bought this. And my statement was, how much money and how long to catch up? It took Samsung and Huawei eight years to field a, field a competitive motive, and they own the network, okay? They've got the it network. It never was that competitive. 
Right. And the game changed. Right. It's not just a modem game. It's a it's it's a it's a 5G modem plus RF game. That's what I said. July 25th, 2019. Now, I never said they couldn't do that. I said it was going to be very, very painful uh, uh, to get there. And let me just take a quote from uh, for, from this article. The engineering teams working on Apple modem chip have been slowed by technical challenges, poor communications, and managers split over the wisdom of trying to design the chips rather than to buy them. So they don't even have internal alignment on the strategy, Daniel. Now, that could be between the semiconductor folks and the iPhone folks, okay? Because the iPhone folks, they want a competitive modem, right? And they want to maybe save uh, a little money. But Apple is notorious. And yes, I've been recruited by Apple uh, uh, before. I didn't take the job, by the way. Um, I never said that publicly, but there we go. Um, and they operate in hives. And these hives don't talk to each other. They're not allowed to talk to each other, but that's also one of the ways that Apple gets secrecy. Uh, you cannot do a modem by being secretive and being in your pods and not talking to each other. So Intel's way of doing work does not apply uh, to doing modems in this case. Here's the other thing. There's, I think, yeah, four to, to four modem uh, vendors. You have to invest in research. Do not confuse research with research and development. Research is 10 years out. You are defining the telecommunication standards in 10 years. If you're not investing in that and you're not in the standard, you will be late. Uh, so how is Apple, who doesn't uh, take front and center on these standards boards because they're secret, but modems can't be secret. They have to communicate with everything. And it's not just 6G. It's 6G, 5G, 4G, 3G, 2G. These, these systems have to interoperate. You have to be able to make a phone call on a 2G network, not just stay in this network. So there's historical baggage, which I think they got from Intel, but there's also the testing that you have to do and the trade-offs in the RF. And that RF subsystem needs to talk like five languages at the same time. Uh, so what's my final point? How long is the board of directors gonna let this lunacy go on, right? I think there were, there were quotes around, I'm paraphrasing, Apple hates Qualcomm, right? But when does common sense and pragmatism come in and say, you know, this just isn't worth it. I need to put these thousands, I mean, thousands, maybe tens of thousands of resources on maybe making a better processor or a GPU or an NPU. Intel and Qualcomm and AMD are after uh, Apple on all of this uh, other intellectual property uh, and, and processors. But board of directors, investors, uh, this isn't a spectacular fail to replace Qualcomm. Not my words, Wall Street Journal, Aaron Tilly. I'm going to leave it at that. And we might, based upon historical commentary, agree. <laughs>